to hide? Uh, how is it to act? Does it oppose the, the forces that stand for Christ, or does it shrink back and hide? Uh, there are instructions for the Israelites, who the Lord said in Matthew 24, 16, let them which be in Judea flee into the hills. Uh, that makes sense, and, and some of Israel will be here in the tribulation, those not saved, and the 144,000, and so on but not the church. The church is nowhere mentioned. So I'll stand on Revelation 3.10. Uh, I will remove you from the earth. I'll take you away from the hour of temptation which comes upon the whole earth. That's the rapture. Then I see the tribulation period, uh, beginning with the uh, Russian invasion of Israel, the unsuccessful invasion, the desecration by the Antichrist, and progressing on until the king of the east and the kings of the north and south make war on the Antichrist in that last great battle of Armageddon. The picture isn't complete of the day of the Lord and the function of the Mount of Olives, though, unless we uh, take up the second coming. And for that, I want to uh, switch to a location with our backs to the east gate of the temple, looking up at this splendid mountain to give you a picture of a place you will surely see again. We're going to look up the Mount of Olives at the summit, and uh, that is the place that we're all going to meet in that great day when he comes. When Zechariah said in his verse 14, 4, on that day his feet will stand upon the Mount of Olives. Now we've uh, crossed the Kidron Valley and we're up against the eastern wall. You, you can hear the sounds from the road. There always was a road separating the Mount of Olives from the Temple Mount, Mount Moriah. And we're standing on the east side of uh, Mount Moriah, and you can see the wall behind me, uh, the east gate where we will all meet, and you see it closed now, but it will open for the king when he comes. And uh, the matter we want to discuss is his coming. The second coming of Jesus Christ, when his feet shall stand that day on the Mount of Olives, Across from me, you can see uh, this beautiful mountain. Uh, you see olive trees. You see uh, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, you see various churches commemorating traditional places uh, where the Lord uh, wept over Jerusalem, uh, made his uh, discourse on prophecy. And of course, at the summit of the Mount of Olives, he ascended to his father. That's the place where he originally rode the donkey into Jerusalem and the place to which he will return when he comes to be king. The matter's taken up in uh, Matthew 24 especially, beginning in the passage where uh, he has advised those in Judea to flee into the mountains to escape the Antichrist, and it's a desperate time. In verse 20 he says, Pray that your flight uh, be not in the winter nor in the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And it goes on to say that uh, his arrival uh, will stop Armageddon short in those days. The coming itself is in Matthew 24, 30 and 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And then the parable of the fig tree. When you see it putting forth leaves, you know that the summer is nigh. Well, we've been showing you Israel, in effect, putting forth leaves, uh, building this society uh, in one generation. And this is the time that the fig tree is blossoming, and you know that this coming is nigh. Uh, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And that generation we've discussed in another context that we mean this people, this nation, this stock, this, these Israelites will not perish until all of the Lord's prophecies are fulfilled and he comes. And he's very certain about it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. He repeats from the Sermon on the Mount. But of that day or hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. It's a complete surprise. He goes on to say, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be uh, when the Lord comes. That is, when people least expect it, marrying and giving in marriage, carrying on the daily course of their lives, and suddenly they're interrupted by the coming of the King. Joel 2.28, which was uh, 
quoted by Peter at Pentecost, will be fulfilled, and it shall come to pass afterward, and that word afterward is key, that's at the end of the age, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. This is a new kingdom where servants and handmaids are important. In fact, are the leadership. As the Lord said, he who is last will be first in the kingdom. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, and this is a hallmark of the kingdom faith, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The remnant is, is the Jewish people. There has always been a certain amount of believers there. And everyone else who will call the name of the Lord, now or then, because redemption is available in Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the neighboring peak to Moriah, but the whole uh, uh, area, the mountain, which is made of Scopus and Olives and Zion and, and Moriah and even the little rock of Calvary are one mountain. The Lord calls Mount Zion my holy mountain. Redemption uh, has been here in this kingdom in part, in the church age, but in the kingdom itself will be here in the person of the king whose palace will be right behind me uh, through the east gate on the top of the Mount of Olives. Jeremiah said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It's Jeremiah 31, 31, often used to show the advent of Christianity, but more intensively it shows the coming of the kingdom. This really is the new covenant that uh, uh, the Lord will establish a new economy, a new government on earth, uh, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, in verse 34, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. Of course, everyone in the world will know the Lord. He is king of the world. He is here in Jerusalem. He can be seen. Every year on the Feast of Tabernacles, Zechariah 14, 16, the whole world comes up to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast and commemorate the occasion of the Lord's temple building here on the Mount of uh, Moriah, and so uh, the world will know him. It, it's easy to read prophetic scripture with hindsight from uh, the kingdom because it, it's also very clear. The nicest part of it is you see graves around me. You see graves on the ground here. These are Arab graves, uh, Muslims uh, intending to prevent the entrance of the Jewish king for one thing and, and to be close to the Dome of the Rock, which is the shrine presently on the site of the future temples. Uh, and you saw graves on the Mount of Olives, many Jewish people buried, uh, their purpose to be in the resurrection when Messiah comes. They are not saying Jesus, they're just saying Messiah, but they have read Zechariah 14, 4, that his feet will stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, and they want to be there uh, when he comes. Well, all these uh, uh, cemeteries have been uprooted in, in different times with different conquerors. These graves have been disturbed. Uh, the Jordanian king took tombstones to build roads uh, from the Jewish cemeteries and so on, unkind gestures. Uh, God promises a wonderful thing in Jeremiah 31, 40. Standing here, you really can appreciate it. It says, And the whole valley of the dead bodies, and of the ashes, and of all the fields, unto the brook of Kidron, unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up, nor thrown down any more, forever. This is the loveliest promise of, of the kingdom to come. The bottom line is simply this.